What's up, man? How are you? Fine. Is it one of those days where you have to do interview after interview? Or do no, I it's that? not. No, not at all. No. I mean, it's they're scattered. You know, they're they're scattered these days. I'll be honest. You know, I'm okay, old. So- so it's I don't not, have a full day schedule. I think it's either me or 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 my relationship to uh, pop culture, where I just I won't allow that, and nor will it allow me to have all day interviews. Um, yeah. So this is the first time of the day you answer the same answers to those same questions. So pretty much, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. But well, I don't think it'll you. be the same questions necessarily. Well, we will see. And the first thing I want to know is. The new album is Maximental and Maximal. I couldn't say that correctly. No problem. Maximalism. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, when in the process of making the album did you decide, hey, this is a Max Mental album as opposed to one of the other projects? Mm-hmm. I mean, from the beginning, because um, basically what happened was we made um, an EP um, called Fucking. It's the Fucking EP. And right. that... You know, we we basically were thinking of kind of expanding upon it or maybe turning it into an album. You know, there was two or three done on that EP. And then we made about five songs and then we went in with um, this kind of a different approach. And we realized that the songs that were coming out after the EP were really different. But it was always, I guess, kind of intended to be Maxim Mental. It just wasn't intended to necessarily be an album um, until probably after the first song. And then we're like, wait, this is this is very different than the EP. And I, I think the big division was that the EP was like early COVID times. And then the album was a little bit, I mean, after they said COVID was over, you know what I mean? Was when like, um, when the second one, but there was a delineation in terms of what was going on in my life and therefore like what the album um, sounded like uh, sobriety was one of those things over the course of the of the album, and then other stuff going on in my, in my personal life that really uh, it just has a much more hopeful outlook. And then you know that really did inform what separates Maxim Mental from you know say anything chiefly. You know, I think it's incredible with your career that no matter what uphill battles you had to deal with in your personal life it never got in the way of you making music. You've always been very prolific. And that leads me to wonder is the songwriting, is that the easiest part of what you do? Because it seems to me like it is. Yeah, it is. And, but I don't, you know, I think that that would be the case for a lot of people if it, if they set themselves up career wise like that, you know, I have a really individuated career where, songwriting is the focal point of everything I do. I mean, one thing I've never indulged really is writing songs for other people, but I would love to, mm-hmm. you know, um, and and production, all those things, the actual um, writing and even the production and and putting it down on, on wax, so to speak, it's no longer wax at all, um, <laughs> you know, is the easiest part because, you know, I'm pretty at this point, well-versed in what it takes to make my own stuff sound like me or, you know, whether it sounds good or not, it's subjective, but definitely like the best it can be for being authentic to me. You know what I mean? So that said, there are people who, who that's the, probably the biggest roadblock is just sitting down and, and what the fuck do I do? And, but I do think that everyone could do what I do. Um, maybe not the exact same thing, but I think the, the prolificness is really just because people have handed me the keys to just sitting around and writing songs all the time. It's like one of the only things that they let me sort of do um, in, 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 in proliferated, you know what I mean? Like, I think that yeah. it's, uh, it's just because, like the song shop thing, you know, I, I came up with that um, a while ago. And so that basically was saying like, Hey, give me a little bit of money. I'll write you a song. And, you know, therefore people are like, okay, so now I'm just doing it constantly. And therefore like the muscle gets exercised. You know, I would compare it to, people who freestyle, you know what I mean? I, that's the closest comparison because they're writing a song every single time. It's just not considered a song by a lot of people. It's a freestyle, but in reality, that's a song, you know? And um, with me, there's just a melody to it um, and and less auto-tune, <laughs> some, some auto-tune. Uh, so, but but I would say it's, it's comparable because you just have to be expected to do that. And then therefore, um, you know, I would say probably for a lot of rappers even, like that's that songwriting is actually probably the most easy part or, or the most common part is, is just bars, you know? 
some of the songwriters I know who are close to as prolific as you are, the starting point or the first part for the song for them is the title. They figure out the title and then they go, what would it sound like from there? What's the first part that you usually come up with? Yeah, it's something like that where it's it's actually more, it's less so the title that has happened before, but it's more like the idea, the concept of the song. Um, it's kind of like, you know, I write comic books as well. And so yes. when I sit down to pitch or I'm, I'm you know, trying to come up with something like that uh, outside of music, it's always a, a loose concept. What if this was that? You know, it's very much like the elevator, cheesy elevator pitch you hear a producer make, you know. It's like Jurassic Park meets Independence Day. So like I'll sit there with a song and I'll be like, what if it's kind of like alive with the glory of love, but it's more of Max a mental jam, you know? And, um, mm-hmm. you know, those, then it just forms itself really quickly because I've just consumed so much that if I go, I want the song to sound like J. Cole or something, I listen to so much goddamn J. Cole that I'm just like, okay, you know, fuck, like this is, this is the kind of thing he would say. And then it ends up being filtered through my either lack of talent in, in his venue or, or, or talents in a different avenue. You know what I mean? So, so it'll, or or personality, obviously, you know, and, and my experience that's different. So it ends up not sounding like Jurassic Park meets Independence Day, even if that's what I sit down and I'm trying to do. So, so I think that is kind of when people come up with the title first, that's my dog. Yeah. Wow. Um, um, that's you know, that is gonna right there. Doing. That's my dog. Uh, <laughs> that's my dog. There you go. And then it's all about your dog. I have an album on the record on the song, the record. That's basically that, you know, it's like, I wrote, I was like, what, what if I wrote a song that's like a, you know, me and my friends like jam, but it's kind of gay. So it really off puts people who are like smoking weed with their friends in the car. And they're just like, damn man. Yeah. And they're just high-fiving each other. And then it's like, but then we sucked each other's dicks you know what i mean so, <laughs> so but it wasn't so extreme as that but but i just wanted to like fuck with with homophobia but then to also right. you know to, to that that male bonding thing of that isn't sexual at all it's just me and my friends you know what i mean um the judd apatow experience of friendship i think is what you're going yeah for. exactly very much very much Al- apatowian in all ways yeah so you you mentioned a thing that I was actually going to go towards, which is that you've had success writing for Marvel and yeah. the comic books and all that. And we've talked about how prolific you are as a songwriter. So my mind goes towards, well, Max eventually is going to be doing screenplays. That's where the so. eventual goal is. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, you know, I but but there's a lot there's a few. I, I wouldn't say there's a lot of things I want to do, but there's a few that's definitely one of them. You know, I, I started out before I was even in a band writing screenplays and they weren't very good, but I wanted to be a director um, before I wanted and writer director like Tarantino. Tarantino was my idol when I was 13. I had a Tarantino themed bar mitzvah party, <laughs> which I'm sure you can relate to in, at least partially. Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't allowed to choose my bar mitzvah theme, so my parents let me do Atlantic sports. City. Sports? No, they wouldn't let me do sports, so they made me do Atlantic <laughs> City. God. I don't know what a 13-year-old knows about Atlantic City, but that was my Nice. You, you that's got- awesome, though. That's that's kind of a cool one. If it was really authentic, it'd be fucked up, you know, like there's strippers and shit. Um, but no, I, I do. That was what I wanted to do. And then I basically stumbled into a situation where, you know, I did also have interest in music and my ones, you know, I wrote a couple songs and then ended up getting a, an offer for a record deal and that changed everything. And then I dove into what was sort of a side project for me. And then it took over my life and I really love it. And I, you know, I don't think it's good to delineate what's your side project, what's not, you know? Um, mm-hmm. but I do think, that, that, yeah, you know, going back to writing in that, well, the only reason I can write scripts for comics is because I knew automatically how um, how a screenplay is written. So, yeah, I would love to. I would love to do that 100%. It's just like I pace myself, try to, yeah. So, again, the creativity is not the hard part. It's the finding the time and being a father of five on that top too. of all the other it- applications. And weird, weirdly <laughs> enough, it's not even so much the fathering. It's like the emotional life of of being an emotional person it's like you know given any day i may feel or not feel like doing shit and um it can be 
it, then it can turn into avoidance or it can be um, indulging one aspect so hard that I'm then tuckered out. You know what I mean? And that's really what I was doing with say anything for so long was that it was just tuckering me out, you know, and I had to eventually go, you know, I need a break from this to even define myself as a person because it's consumed me to the point where it's now leaking out into my personal life. And, you know, the character that this band is, is now flirting with me and trying to make its way into my actual actions. And that was, uh, you know, that was the last say anything record was a concept record about someone else very overtly and when i found myself kind of acting a little bit more like that person i was like okay this is not chill like i'm not gonna go heath ledger on this you know like i'm not because i was to some degree like i think that was the most amazing noble thing what he did for for his art i have no doubt knowing that with that dude or when you see people who you know, in music, you know, move to fucking India and, and like sit in a basement somewhere where someone died just to like, you know, like Trent Reznor. Alanis did that. Yeah. Did, did she, really? Okay. <laughs> you know, so, so like Reznor did the Manson house, you know, uh, for, and, and it's like, dude, eventually I'm sure he was spooking himself out where he's talking about killing pigs and it's like, he's creating a character, but very much so he's like, but I do hate the cops. What's stopping me from going to fucking shooting a cop, you know, or, or like, and then where do you delineate that from murdering some poor woman who's an innocent person too? You know what I mean? So I think, I think it can be really confusing if you don't keep your head on straight. And those are the things that like generally distract me is like trying to be as in it as I am with these things, but not let it take over too much. Well, down to the last two questions before I let you roam free. All good, man. Thank you. Yeah. And the first one is Maximental was the first time you outwardly called the thing a solo project. So yeah. do you think that the next release from you will be another Maximental project? I, I mean, it depends on how it stacks up, but I don't think so. As of right now, the stuff I'm writing for is not uh, Maximental, but then there is stuff I want to do with Maximental overtly. Like the next thing I want to do is like a mix tape format thing where it's just like I mix, I mix, I'm, I, uh, I like miss like the hip hop portions of the record a lot. And it's all I listen to to some degree. So I really want to find a way to indulge that aspect of it a little bit more because I wanted like my first thing with this project to be well-rounded ish, but then overtly influenced by hip hop. But I feel like, um, you know, I, I feel like I could indulge whether it's like having features more and stuff like that and working with other hip hop producers and stuff like that. Just like, it's just what I want to do. You know what I mean? Like if I had my druthers, I'd be like writing for like a, a, a rapper who like hires someone to help him write books. <laughs> which there's a lot you know and and, and oh, i don't mean that yeah. that's i don't mean that that's bad that's actually awesome because think about how many songwriters do it mm -hmm. you get in there with co-writers or, or producers it just depends on the artist and what they're trying to do like um you know i worked with kanye and i didn't songwrite for kanye or any of that but he works as a hive mind he yeah. has just all of the smartest people he can find yeah, um, and, 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 and then, did it. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, and, yeah. and then dumb dude in the back. I'm just kidding. But like, I was there, and like Rihanna's milling around, and then me, and he's just taking influence from anyone who's around. So being close to things like that, you know, at the time, you know, hip hop was an outlier in what I consumed. Like, I, I it was the first thing I ever got into musically in terms of buying music like it was like dre and snoop dogg like i think dre was the first person where i heard myself in an artist where i'm like he reminds me of what i want to be like in a way and um and certain in certain ways and then like you know all these years later it is what i love doing is producing and and at sometimes i guess rapping ish so i feel like finding a way to justify that in my own head is is really the, what I'm interested in doing because so much of my experience lately has been traumatic. And I think trauma can be a big, um, for some hip hop music, it can be, uh, unless you're just kind of like making really lighthearted hip hop music, like I think authentic trauma and then celebrating your release from it is to me what I connect to in hip hop music. Like it's, it's a jubilant thing and therefore you get away with certain things that are like maybe seen as fucked up or whatever, but they're just you celebrating that you're not 
getting fucked over or, or getting abused essentially. And that's what I connect to most with someone like Jay-Z, who's like my hero is like, he lived through fucked up shit uh, as a kid. And then as a, as an adult, and then now everything he does is almost a reaction trying to make the world a positive place and his own mind positive by doing it. So I want to just indulge that aspect of it just because even since making the Maxim mental record, it's been serious traumatic shit going on in my life for sure, which Hasn't been the case in a long time. Honestly, I was flying high for a while. <laughs> hmm. Well, glad that you have a release, creatively speaking. Thank you. Thank you. It helps. Up and up. And oh, yeah, for sure. The last question, which is a stupid question. You said the magic words are for bar mitzvah. Yeah. You're a, long, uh, you're a Los Angeles person by way mm -hmm. of New York originally. Yeah. Yep. Was David Lee Roth in any way an influence mm -hmm. in your musical career? He wasn't, but at the same time, Metallica was, um, I will say like, you know, it was never like, I wasn't a big like Van Halen person, but I was big on like Ac Misfits, Metallica um, and cheesy Iron Maiden. Like there, that was like at age 13, all of my friends got into Tupac and then Kiss, I guess Kiss is a better they, yeah. Like Kiss was big for us. Like we well, had they the were fingers. bar mitzvah. Half the band was bar mitzvah, so that's closer to the yeah, very much so. And they had their sort of revival, like the unmasking period, yes. right around that time for me. And then like Todd McFarlane started making the figures, and it was like come into this world mm, of to like thirteen year old boys of, who didn't know anything about because we were all into like Nirvana and shit. Yeah, and they're like, what the fuck is this? But then it was kind of like superheroes or something, you know? So like Spawn. On, you know, so it made sense. Um, but I feel like I could probably relate to David Lee Roth as a person. I just don't know yet. I would have to do the research, but something tells me we've got some a crossover genetically, if not on the Jewish end, because I'm a Havzi. You know what I mean? Roth, I guess Roth is Jewish, right? Oh, is he a Jew? Yes, he's totally. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then, then it is the Jewish end. Yeah. But I can't say he looks like a purebred himself. Who knows? <laughs> You know, it Stalin. gets messy. It gets messy around the Holocaust. You know, like who the fuck knows what's going on there? You never know. But thank yeah. you for your time. Thank you for the years of great music and looking forward thank to seeing you live in New York in the near future. Awesome. Thank you so much. Outro cast.